and welcome back to my channel. I'm doing a bit of an update today on the garden. Um, it's a bit rubbish. Um, we've come to a bit of a crappy decision. Um, so if you watch back my old videos, you'll know that the garden is like pretty badly overrun with bindweed. Um, like really bad. I mean, it's all up the hedges. It's everywhere it's just taken over and as you know like bindweed is horrific to get rid of unless you can dig down um so we've come to a bit of a rubbish decision that unfortunately we're gonna have to use some pretty strong weed killer um and i know some of you are probably thinking oh that's not really that bad you know and that's fine like you know some people use it some people don't but I've never used weed killer any and like anywhere, um, and I'm a bit gutted because um, even though the garden was like really badly overrun with bindweed last year, um, the garden was wild. Like I mean, it was so full of like insects. You could go outside the back door and it was humming with crickets. And we had frogs and newts, we had hedgehogs, foxes, we've had a heron at one point, um, we've had dragonflies, um, the hawk moth things, butterflies, bats, and like hundreds of different birds. Um, and we live in a town, so we're not like in the middle of the countryside or anything like that. Um, so whilst the garden was like, it had basically rewilded itself, um, which is great, which is the whole, you know, this is what I wanted was a wildlife garden. On the other hand, um, because of the bindweed literally killing every plant I bought last year, and I must have spent so much of my money buying plants to, you know, add to the garden, that's, that's the only thing, it's killed everything. Um, so I am not able to plant any butterfly and bee friendly flowers because the bindweed is just killing it all um and apart from that the fact that it's not like you know we've got nothing pretty to look at so we've come to the conclusion that um we've tried digging out the bindweed we've tried keeping on top of it and pulling it out whenever we see it but you just cannot dig down far enough um and it's just coming back and it's just so bad uh, I'm not talking just like a little bit, I mean it's it's everywhere and we didn't have bindweed till, till like about three four years ago and then all of a sudden it just crept into the garden. Um, like other weeds and that like nettles, you know I'll leave them alone but bindweed, my god it's just ruining everything, it's all up the shed, it's up the fence, it's just absolute nightmare and it got to the point last year where I just stopped gardening because I was just like, this is doom mode and I can't keep on top of it. I'm just going around in circles. So we've come to the conclusion that in order to create a beautiful, aesthetic um, and, you know, wildlife inclusive garden, we need to get rid of the bindweed, which means we're going to have to use some pretty serious weed killer. Um, and I'm just so worried that it's going to kill every all the insects and everything and I'm worried because I love my birds I'm worried that they might get it in them or something I don't know maybe I'm just being like silly about it but I don't know but yeah I'm just a bit like anti anti weed killer so I'm like I'm gonna have to use it in order to create the garden that I want but I'm just like oh my god I can't I don't know what to do I've got to do it, I know I've got to do it, but I'm just, I just don't want to do it, I really don't want to do it, but anyway, so I thought I'd give you a little tour just to see how we're getting on, um, so I'm going to show you the pond area, I'm going to show you um, the patio, which you might have seen last time, which is still really nice, um, yeah, and just give you a little tour of what's going on. So, currently stood like two thirds of the way down the garden. I'm not gonna show you behind me because it's just dumping ground the old chicken coop, the kids' den, just a load of rubbish. Anyway, this pole here, so my partner cut back like this tree here, 
that's coming from the neighbours so we need to sort that out because it's growing up into the tree it's just taken over and then he cut back loads of this and loads of the hedge and it's just been dumped there um we are going to get rid of it we had a quote for somebody to come and remove it it was hundreds of pounds so what we're going to do is take the top layer off and burn it or take it to the dump but i want to leave the bottom layer because i think there might be some hedgehogs hibernating in there wait till spring and then take the rest of the tip Anyway, underneath there is just the compost bin, so it's nothing fancy. Um, the kids made a den, so we just kind of leave that area for them to play in. They made a little roof, look, and they're cute. They've got like a little chair and table in there somewhere. Some bird feeders. <laughs> and then this is a view of the garden. So excuse my greenhouse, it blew over here and I just haven't moved it. So you can't really see the bindweed at the moment because obviously it's died back i'm trying to insert some pictures i mean you can see like the other day i was taking this off here and it was up here it was just everywhere great big lumps of it. it was all up my tree it was everywhere so but unfortunately i can't dig down enough because the, the soil is really rubbish so it's really hard to dig so i can't really dig the roots out and I don't think, to be honest, you might miss a bit, so, yeah. And that, that is a uh, red robin tree, um, which I bought. That's the only plant this year that really has seemed to have not been affected by anything. But anyway, this area here, so if I stand back here. So, this area here, we're going to dig all this out, which we started to do in the late summer. Um, we're going to dig it all out, and then there's going to be, like, flowers and stuff here that are quite tall then there's going to be a little clearing with a bench and then on either side there's going to be like roses oh, that's the idea anyway i don't know whether it'll work but i mean look at the brambles they're ridiculous aren't they yeah anyway that's what i call my rose garden area so we did grow a few veg here which have died back now with some pumpkins some rhubarb some squash this was all full of wildflowers but the bindweed was all the way up there it was so bad obviously it's died back now but it was horrific and it just smothered this whole area um it was all at my bird feeder everywhere and so this is another this one doesn't really seem to have bindweed in it but it's just got a load of stuff in it now so i did have raised beds so i got had some raspberries in there um so this is all coming out and that's going to be another patch of wildflower um lady muck's lost her head um behind that is a bug hotel which has kind of been buried and then this i usually sit out here with a book and read but the nettle has obviously grown a bit now but this tree was a stick that i stuck in the ground a few years ago to support something and it grew and we think it's a willow because it goes absolutely mental um and it, that's grown that big in about three years but it's lovely in the summer when you've got like the wind chimes and stuff on it. Um, but the only thing is, is when this pond was put in, it wasn't done very well. It didn't know much about ponds. It was just kind of a hole dug in the ground. There's no fleece on it. Um, it's not deep enough for the frogs to hibernate and there's not really a very good ledge. We had to makeshift one. So Kirk wants to rip it out, make it a bit bigger put the fleece in, dig a bottom hole in, put a proper ledge in um, and the reason it's got all this duckweed in um, we actually found out after the whole summer of just trying to dig it out and buying plants to counteract it we actually found out the main reason is because it's not getting enough sunlight so we've got a lavatera here which I'm going to dig out because one it blocks the sunlight and two I can't see the pond from the kitchen so we're going to dig that out because that grows absolutely wild I mean if you want a big plant that takes over a garden dig it put a lavatera in because they go nuts that's going to come out so that will clear that whole area um yeah we've got loads of logs and stuff which we leave for the frogs to hibernate and then the dragonflies lay their eggs in the spring we've got some uh watercress something like that i bought this from the salad bar in morrison's and planted and just chucked it in didn't even put in compost and just chucked it in the pond and it's just gone rampant I don't know if it smells actually. No, it doesn't smell of anything. But yeah, this was literally, um, yeah, from Morrison's. <laughs> How weird is that?
So this is another area, my bug house fell down for some strange reason, but yeah, I've got the bird feeder up here. Um, this is all raspberries. They were planted from the pound shop years ago and they don't actually give me any raspberries. They just grow everywhere and they're friggin' nightmare to get rid of. So I've been slowly cutting them back. I've managed to clear the greenhouse because there's quite a few in there. And then I'm gonna put some roses up this fence along here. Um, and yeah, I'll take you to the patio area. So, patio area still looks really nice. Still got the nasturtiums going mental. I've put all the cushions and stuff in the shed now. I've um, got our little pond with the water feature. Got a little trough area there. That's a bit of rubbish to squeeze out my bird feeding area. Um, yeah, so can see that the patio doesn't really need anything to do into it but we are getting another one of these fences is going on along here it's a natural I was gonna say willow but I don't think it's willow but anyway um it was like 80 quid for the whole roll off Amazon and it's all it's really strong wood and then it's all entwined with metal and we've put like a rope string light through it um yeah so that's gonna go there so the idea is like the flowers will grow up it and then kind of hide the rest of the garden not because I want to hide it but all garden designers say that a garden oh that little blue tip all garden designers say that a garden should be like an adventure so you kind of hide little areas so you've got to go down the bottom of the garden to kind of see what's down there so that's the idea anyway um yeah so it looks looking pretty my little birdhouse which I got from the garden centre but I think you can get those off Amazon. So I'm actually currently sat in my shed right now which I promised myself last year that this would be my pretty little girly shed that I would do crafts in and I would read my books in blah 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 but it's turned into a bit of a dumping ground I mean there's fishing equipment in here there's stuff on my job like it's just ridiculous like I don't know what's wrong with me but anyway I'm sitting on my nice little rattan boho chair which I got for free and I don't know if you remember these, like, from years ago, a little rocking chair. And it came with a cushion, and my parents had one of these chairs when I was younger, so I'm 37. Um, my parents were like proper hippies, they grew up in like the 60s and 70s, and they had one of these chairs, and I loved it. Um, yeah, and I just found it, and this little old lady gave it me, and she was like, please look after it, we've got so many fond memories of it. So I did have it in my lounge, but um, unfortunately I was so worried about it getting broken. Um, the kids like climbing on it and stuff. And although I love the chair, it's not the most comfortable. It's quite upright. So it's great for sitting in the shed in the garden with a little book and a cup of tea. But it's not exactly something you can lounge on. But I'm going to keep it because I love it. It's just bloody massive. And it's just like, if you can see my crap station, it's just taking everything off. So that's where we're at with the garden. Um... As you can see like it doesn't look like we've done a lot but actually we did loads like between when did we start must have been like may time between may and now um i mean over the summer my younger son had complications from an operation so we were in and out of hospital then it was the summer holidays and the kids were off school um and we've had like every bug going like literally everything was going around so we've not had an awful lot of time um yeah there's so much to do um no idea where i'm gonna start uh, i might start with feeding the birds that's a good idea i usually procrastinate quite a lot <laughs> anyway so that's the idea so if you've got any like advice and tips on like the whole weakling situation um, please tell me I'm not just being dramatic because I feel awful about doing it I just can't, I don't have the heart to like use it because I'm so scared I'm going to kill something but I have to try and think about the long term like I could either leave it the way it is and then never have a garden that I enjoy because it's just full of weeds or nip it in the bud now get rid of the buying weed and then next year have a garden that I can enjoy and will entice more wildlife. Um, yeah, it's just a heartbreaking decision, isn't it? But 
anyway so any tips and advice let me know and don't forget to follow me on instagram the world gardener and yeah see you later bye